Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome back to my workshop. Today I'm going to be making a cutlery drawer organiser, but you could modify this to use in your workshop in any of your drawers. So let's get tinkering. I found this second hand wood and I think this will be plenty for my cutlery drawer insert. This will be the base and then these will be the sides. This wood itself is too tall in this direction, it's too thick in this direction. So the first thing that I need to do is to cut the lumber down to a size that's appropriate for a cutlery drawer insert. I've set my table saw up to use my thin strip push block and my feather board and I've set the distance here so that this piece that's cut should end up being slightly thinner than the off cut. I can then put the off cut through and then they'll both be exactly the same size. I'm now going to rip these pieces down the middle to make them thinner. I'm using the same approach. The first cut should be slightly thinner, so when I put the off cut through, I get them both exactly the same size. I'm now going to square up this edge. I can now cut this to length, and I've made sure that the reference edge is against the fence. And I'll do the same on this piece. Just to recap on where we've got to, this piece has been cut to size, and I've tested the fit. I have all these pieces, which are a lot more than I need, which are all the same height and they're all the same thickness. And I have some longer pieces and again, I've got more than I need. I now cut 45 degree bevels for the mitre joints. I've set the stop to the width of this board. Now I can cut these to length. I haven't glued anything together yet because I want to add a divider here. So I need to measure this, and cut it the right length so that I can put some rebates in to slot this divider in. And then I've got to do exactly the same with this piece here. It'll give me two smaller sections and one large section. So let me explain what I'm doing here. I've set the blade to half the thickness of the wood. I've put the piece that I'm going to use to make the insert here as a reference thickness, and I've set this up so it's at this edge of the blade. What I will do is I will take a cut, I'll then remove this, and I'll put this in, which is a piece of wood the same thickness as the kerf of the blade, and then move it across and take another cut. And then I should have a rebate in this at exactly the right width and depth that I need. Now what I'm going to do is just test the width first and the depth on a spare piece to make sure I've got it all set up right. Well, I can see my first cut isn't quite deep enough so I'm going to raise the blade just a tad and we'll try that. And it looks like I've got it about right. It's a nice fit, there's enough space for a little bit of glue, there's a slight wobble there but not enough to worry about. Now I'm set up to make those two cuts. I now just need to mark where I need to cut this piece. So I've put this piece halfway there and I need to mark this at the halfway point, which is there. Because the side and the insert are different lengths, I've taped them together so that when I cut them I can be sure that they're going to line up properly. So this is about as far as I've got with my design. So I'm thinking I'll probably put another divider there for the serving spoons and teaspoons and I'll create something so that they can be stacked on top of each other. And then I think I'll do the same for the cutlery. I'll create something that allows them to only sit where they need to sit and they'll all stack on top of each other. So let's get started on that. I'll do this bit first because that's probably the easiest bit. So it's exactly the same approach with this piece. This is a dry fit. Now I know that everything fits, I can glue it all up and begin sanding everything down so that it looks nice. It's all clamped up and square, and now I'm just going to clean the excess glue. I left this overnight to dry. I now just need to glue these last bits on. Just 
just need to clean up the glue now. If you haven't got one of these clamping tables, I recommend them. They're quite easy to add to a normal workbench and I've got a video if you want to look at it, but they are just awesome at this sort of thing. Decided a plane might be okay. Because of the grain of this bottom piece is going up, I think if I just plane it straight to start with, it'll just splinter all along this back edge. So I'm gonna start by planing it at an angle, just to take that back off. Well, I've finished sanding down, I think. I'm now just, um, I've hoovered it all. I'm now just going to go over it with a tack cloth. I'm going to use a furniture oil on all the sides and inserts. I'm not going to bother with the base because the base is going to be um, lined and I'm not going to bother with the base underneath because you're not going to see that. It's going to be in the drawer. I will probably do the sides, although I don't really need to do that because it's going to be in the drawer as well. All that's left now is to line the trays and for that I'm using some sticky back felt. Oh, God, it's sticky. I have to say it's applying a lot better than I expected. This stuff is very, very sticky and I'm not getting any bubbles. Now the last piece. So this is what the drawer currently looks like. This is what it looks like with the insert in. And this is what it looks like full of cutlery. Well, that turned out better than I expected. One of the things I learned was by starting a project and not necessarily understanding exactly how it was gonna turn out is not always a bad thing. I've been putting off this project quite a bit because I couldn't work out how to lay out all the different components. And by starting by building just the tray and then adding the sections, it became a lot easier to build. And I only really had to think a few steps ahead, which made a massive difference to my confidence in it being able to build this project. So if you've got a project that's similar, why not start by breaking it down into smaller parts and see if that helps you get the motivation to do it. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.